Yo, what's up, guys? Jason Gaddis here, back with another episode of the Relationship Schools Smart Couple Podcast. Yeah. If it sounds a little echoey or strange, that's because I'm sitting in a rental car right now in Santa Cruz, California, on the coast, basically. And I'm on a little family vacation, and one of the reasons I love my job is because I can do this. I can travel with my family and bust out the mic and my laptop and record a short podcast to help you. Pretty cool, right? So I'm grateful to be here right now, even though it's a little weird there's, we're kind of in a glamping campground-ish place. There's people everywhere roasting s'mores um, around fires. And I'm in a car talking about marriage and relationship. Yeah, wouldn't it be cool if I like called everybody, hey guys, um, come on over. I'm about to talk about why you're struggling in your marriage. <laughs> come check this out. I think it would be pretty funny. And most people would be like, I don't need that. But then they're going to go into their tent, their cabin, their hotel room, and they're going to sleep on opposite sides of the bed. You know? So thank you for being the kind of person that's being honest with yourself that it's challenging in a long-term relationship, because it is. So the other cool thing about being here in Santa Cruz, California, is I got to teach a two-hour mini workshop lecture style presentation, if you will, to a group of about 30 amazing people. And you might be one of them listening. You might have been there. And that was in Sausalito, just outside of, just north of San Francisco. And thanks to Trish and Brittany, we had a killer venue and a wonderful time. It was awesome. So it was really the first time I got to present some material in person outside of Colorado because I do it all the time and it reaches outside of Colorado, but I'm like sitting on my ass at home. So this was fun to be in person and just your energy for those that were there, your energy and your exchanges with me and how we um, how we danced and your questions were really, really helpful. I wanted to go all night. I mean, that's just kind of what comes up in me is I could do what I do all day and all night. Uh, I love it that much. And because it's so aligned with my life, you know, I'm, I'm talking to my wife and this is all we talk about and this is how we parent our kids and how we teach our kids and learn from our kids. And uh, it's just the conversation that I, I'm in uh, everywhere. So it feels like a real honor that I get to present, you know, in person. So Perhaps I'm coming to a city near you, maybe when the Smart Couple book comes out. For now, it's a slow build. I actually don't love to travel because I like to be home with my family. And I love Boulder, Colorado. Um, But I do love the world, and I want to see more of it. I don't want to bring my family. So if there's enough of you that want me in a town near you, then um, make a request and help me organize it. And uh, someday I will meet you there outside a field, beyond the, how's that poem go? Anyway, okay, this question, this is the shorter podcast episode, the Ask Me Anything, and this question is from Caitlin. Caitlin, sorry. How do we reparent our partner and meet them in regressive childlike states when they are triggered without infantilizing them? If you know what the term infantilizing, infantilizing that means basically um, some of us feel grew up in families where we felt like an infant in relationship to our parents, and they treated us like an infant. That's infantin- infantilizing. Infantilizing. <laughs> it's a funny word. Um, probably a few different ways to pronounce that. Anyway, I find that when I go into nurturing mode, when my partner is triggered, he often responds with aggression. I think in part because it feels emasculating or patronizing. Okay, just to educate you on the term emasculating. So for a man, that's when usually a woman 
will treat him in such a way that feels like uh, he's cutting off his balls or is challenging his manhood. And he feels like he has to give up uh, his manliness or manhood somehow um, to acquiesce to a woman or the feminine or even another man, perhaps. And he feels emasculated. Um, and usually it's a pretty humiliating or embarrassing experience for a man. But the reason a man will feel emasculated, by the way, is because he's insecure and um, around his, not even his masculinity, just his adulthood. And he's bought into this way in which you're supposed to be as a man. And then you, when someone challenges that uh, framework about what it means to be a man and you've bought into it, then you're going to feel attacked or criticized. Okay. So anyway, um, quick comment on emasculating. So she says, I think in part because it feels emasculating or patronizing. Possibly because he doesn't feel lovable in those moments also. So basically she's asking, how do we reparent our partner and meet them when they're triggered, regressed, um, in what we perceive as maybe a childlike state? And, you know, if you're listening to my podcast, you're like, hey, well, how do I reparent them if they're just triggered? And then now they feel not just triggered, they feel infantilized, they feel emasculated, and they feel patronized, you know? like we're condescending or something. That's a really good question. So a couple of things, first of all. Um, number one, I want to zoom out with my partner and I want to have agreements again. Back to the old agreement. Honey, is it cool that I um, reparent you when you're triggered? Are you cool if I come in with a certain kind of mom energy or a parenting energy when you're really in it? Would that be helpful? And then if my partner says no... Okay, then I'm going to say, okay, what would be helpful? Because we need to get to know one another such that we know what helps our partner when they're triggered. So it might be that you actually don't know what works for him and you're just doing like a technique you learned on the podcast or in a class of mine and you're not actually checking in with him. Like, honey, what would be most helpful to you when I'm triggered or when you're triggered? Um do you want space? Do you want me to come in? Do you want me to touch you? Do you want no touch? Um, do you want words? Do you want no words? Do you want me to just stroke your back? Do you want me to, um, you know, call a friend and say you're struggling so they come over and help you? Like, what, what do you need, honey? And if a person says, I don't know, we need to start to investigate and know. We want to know how to take care of our partner when, they're da when they go down and when they're triggered. And when they're triggered with us, Sometimes we're not going to be that helpful because anything we do, we're going to like fuck it up. Um, we can't do anything right in those moments. So I want to have a conversation about that. Well, honey, it seems like um, I screw everything up when you're triggered. Like I can't do anything right. Would you say that's true and get a shared reality? Yeah, that seems true. I, I totally feel like you're not helping at all. Was well, there anything that would help? No, because I'm just too in it. Okay, well, sounds like time and space maybe would help. And that might be the key ingredient. Well, how much time? Uh, because I don't like going on more than a day or more than a few hours. So how much time do you need? How much space do you need, right? And then if I'm the guy, in this case, I want to know how to get out of my shit. And I want to try to see through my partner's um, neurotic ways and see that she's genuinely trying to help me. And I may, you know, she may be the most sweetest, amazing person and doing it just right in all the good ways for me. And I still might be annoyed by her and her behavior. So if we can have a sense of humor about that and talk about that, then I can stay on my game more and be like, okay, I know that basically nothing you do works for me because I'm so in it. Then I need to resource myself. I need to um, call a male friend. I need to go to my men's group. I need to call my therapist. I need to journal. I need to go meditate. I need to go out in nature. I need to hit some pillows. I need to do whatever I need to do to like get back in myself so that I can stop seeing you as a threat, right? So basically, Caitlin, you and your partner need to talk openly about, um, about this. And again, if he's into growth and development, this conversation is going to be a great one. If he's not into growth and development, this is going to be like pulling teeth or he's going to say I'm fine uh, when he's really not fine and you know and that's total bullshit and you, now he's incongruent, you don't trust him. Um, 
So now we're dealing with a different kind of monster if he's not into growth and development because he'll just get defensive. But if he's into growth and development, this is, um, this is a great conversation to have. Okay? And then when, if he responds with aggression, again, you get to set boundaries and say, hey, this works for me, this doesn't work for me. Um, when you raise your voice like that or when you make threats like that, that's below the belt. Uh, no, I'm a no to that. We need to make agreements around this. And you, again, we have those agreement-like conversations when we're clear-headed and we're in the front part of our brain, not in the heat of the moment. Okay? And then, again, my challenge to you men, if you feel emasculated by a woman trying to help you, um, dude, get over it in a certain way. Like, work on your shit so that that's not so damn triggering for you. I hear you. Look, I've been there. And um, that's your issue. If you feel emasculated by anybody, like, that's... You get to speak up for yourself. You get to set boundaries. And you also got to work on what messages do I have around masculinity that um, I'm vulnerable here when someone criticizes me or I feel criticized by someone. Yeah, and women, you have your version of this, perhaps, when a man is trying to help you and you're like, hey, I'm a strong feminist, like, back off. I can do this myself. Um, Maybe not. And again, Ellen and I, my wife, are into... It's really important that we're strong, independent people. And it's also really important that we're able to be helped by each other. That when we get triggered, our partner can be a resource. Even though our nervous system is saying they're a threat, the front part of my brain can go, actually, I know she has my back and it's going to be okay. And so how can I be kind right now and move to kindness as soon as possible? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you said, well, maybe he doesn't feel lovable in those moments. Well, again, um, if I don't feel lovable in those moments when my wife is criticizing me or I feel criticized or I'm feeling like she's condescending or something, my issue again. And I need to work on how do I feel more lovable here um, because she does love me. And how do I just continue to increase my value, my self-worth? And how do I educate her about that? Hey, I'm feeling really kind of insecure. I need you to be gentle with me, you know. Can you bring out the kid gloves? That'd be nice, honey. Instead of, you know, you know, the boxing mitts. Okay? Metaphorical, of course, I'm talking about. Okay, cool. Um, thanks, guys. Fun to um, record a podcast in a car in California. I've never done this before. And hopefully it comes clear and uh, you get served by this. And thanks for you listening, attending to yourselves and each other. And please, please, please practice, and let's get serious. So I'm going to keep challenging you to join the relationship school in some way. The obvious point is to join the relationship school roots community. Okay, $47 a month gets you a couple of practice calls, time with me, time with my students who are stepping up into leadership roles, who are coaches who are going to help you. Um, And you can practice, which is what gets you the result. So practice, right? If you're just a podcast listener and you don't want to practice, no problem. You're just going to get less of a result than if you invest money in yourself and you take the next step to go, okay, I'm, I'm even more serious now. I want to, I want to move up and step up and um, invest in myself. I want to um, change these patterns in my psychology so that I, I can be less reactive and more attractive and behave in a way that uh, works for people in my life, you know, and, and me, most importantly, in my integrity. So jasongaddis.com slash roots to apply. And we'd love to see you in there. It's an amazing community of growth development oriented people like you. Okay, folks, have a beautiful rest of your night, morning, evening, and we'll talk soon. <laughs>